What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. So when it comes to food choices, I'm sure we all have our own preferences. However, today I'm gonna to show you five foods you really need to make room for in your diet. We all should be eating these, not just because they're good, healthy choices, but when it comes to the gym, they're actually science proven to help you build muscle faster. And the best part is finding a way to incorporate them into what you're already eating is super simple. Kind of simple. All right, so it doesn't get any easier than this first food to start reaping the benefits both in the gym and just in your overall health than the blueberry. Now look, we gotta get something straight right off the bat here. I'm not talking about blueberry flavored anything or blueberries in it. So anybody that likes those blueberry scones from Starbucks, that doesn't count. Well, what we're talking about though is just eating pure fresh blueberries and that's gonna be a theme throughout the entire video. Now, when it comes to blueberries, I also sometimes hear, well, they can make you fat. There's a lot of sugar in them. Guys, do me a favor. Nobody ever got fat eating blueberries. There's 0.8 calories in each one of these things. That means for 100 of them, you got about 80 calories, which is only 15 grams of sugar, and it's also not very high in the glycemic index, so it doesn't cause those blood sugar spikes. Now, when it comes to the gym, there's actually a study performed on women aged 25 to 40 who ate two cups of blueberries for six weeks. And what they found was an increase in the number of human muscle progenitor cells, which are the cells that go on to produce new muscle tissue. And they also saw a lower percentage of dead human muscle progenitor cells, which indicated a resistance to oxidative stress. In other words, more resilience as they went through their own workouts. So what that means is faster muscle recovery in between workouts. And we know that if you're gonna train natural, faster muscle recovery is your number one weapon for building new muscle. Throw in the fact that these are also rich in vitamin C and potassium and are a powerful anti-inflammatory, and you can't go wrong with adding blueberries to your diet, especially because it's so damn easy to do. And so there isn't a single one of us out here who hasn't probably been told since the age of two that we should be eating more green vegetables, and for good reason. However, there's a specific type of green vegetables I want you to be focusing on, and they're the cruciferous vegetables. And maybe the first thing that pops into your mind is broccoli or cauliflower. But did you know there's actually a lot more choices that will fit the bill here? We're talking about things like cabbage, or Brussels sprouts, or bok choy, or kale, or one of my favorites, broccoli rabe. All these foods are rich in three important things. The first being phytonutrients, the second being vitamin K, and the third being something called sulforaphane. You see, these foods, when eaten or cooked or chopped, will actually break down a substance called glucoraphanin into sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is actually being proven to be a very, very powerful antioxidant and also anti-inflammatory. One of my favorites I always mention here on this channel, Rhonda Patrick has talked a lot about these benefits. Now, maybe you're thinking to yourself, but I don't really like any of those foods, even the other options you gave me, Jeff. Well, you can still meet your needs by just having a salad with some arugula and radish in it. So there's no excuses here, there's a lot of food options. And when it comes to building muscle, there's actually some exciting studies coming out that were done, albeit on pig cells, and no, we're not pigs, but we do have similar muscle cells, and they showed that by exposing these human pig muscle cells to sulforaphane, that they could actually deactivate something called myostatin. And that's a type of protein that's actually responsible for putting the brakes on new muscle growth. So if mom's urgings weren't enough of a reason to put more of these on your plate, hopefully now, with greater options here, you've got greater reason to make sure you do. Look, while green foods might get all the love, you also have to pay attention to the orange foods because there's plenty of love about them. And no, Jesse, we're not talking about these. They don't count. But what we are talking about is foods like cantaloupe, pumpkin, squash, my favorite, sweet potatoes, carrots, mangoes, and even oranges themselves. And they all have carotenoids, and these are what actually protect our health. They're what are known as free radical scavengers. They go out and they get rid of the oxidation that can cause cell breakdown and early aging, and they also help to protect things even like your own eyesight. The fact is, guys, you need to get more of them in your diet, but how? Well, first of all, unlike the blueberries, since there's a greater variety here of these foods, they're not all the same in terms of their calorie impact. So some a little bit more caloric, like the sweet potatoes or oranges, and some a little bit on the lighter side, like cantaloupe and pumpkin. You just gotta figure out where that fits in your diet, but you need to figure out some way to fit some version of them into it. And when it comes to the body changing capabilities of these foods, they actually did a study on competitive cyclists where they looked at a particular flavonoid inside of oranges called 2S hesperidin, and they did it over the course of eight weeks. They had 40 amateur cyclists divided into two groups, one that took it, 500 milligrams, and the other one that did not. 
And what they saw was some pretty impressive findings. The supplemental group showed a decrease in body fat percentage by 10.4%. Now mind you, that's not, let's say, from 20% down to 10%. That's a 10% drop from, let's say, 20, so 2% loss in body fat, but it's still significant. They also found an increase in muscle mass percentage of 1% and total muscle mass of 1.7% with no changes in the placebo. And the good news is you don't have to be an athlete to see these benefits. The fact is you just need to figure out a way to start eating more of these orange foods. One little caution here though, if you eat too much of this, you can get something called keratinemia, which is when you actually start to get like orange colored hands. And I kind of mentioned how much I love sweet potatoes and pumpkin. It's actually due to an increase in vitamin A. And if you see that, all you have to do is just simply decrease your consumption. But I'll tell you this, most people are not having a problem with too much of this, they're having too little. So if you've watched my channel for any length of time or actually even watched my full day of eating video, which I'll link for you at the end of this one, you notice that there's one food, this next one here, that I actually eat every single morning, and it's ginger. And you might have been told a long time ago that if you had an upset stomach, it's good to sort of ease nausea, but it goes way beyond that. It's a powerful anti-inflammatory, and in my world, it's one of the best ways to actually minimize the late onset muscle soreness after a hard workout. And we all know that if you can't train because of muscle soreness or can't give a good effort in the gym, then how are you gonna make real gains? You need to be able to control this. And there are studies that show that taking just two grams of it a day are enough to decrease delayed onset muscle soreness by up to 25%. Particularly helpful for those that like to incorporate slow eccentric training into the workouts, which is one of the known drivers of delayed onset muscle soreness. However, even if you never lifted a weight at all, the anti-inflammatory benefits system-wide are undeniable. Now, how do you get it? It's actually quite simple. You can either take the actual ginger root and powder it up and put it into certain recipes, or you could drink ginger tea a couple times a day, or like I like to do, I just take the pickled ginger, as you see here, I kind of throw it on my eggs. Trust me, it's not gross, and all I need is about this much to meet my daily requirements. The fact is, if I didn't think this food was that important, I would have actually made an entire video dedicated to just it. I'll link that one for you at the end of this video as well, but the point is, figure out a way to get ginger in your diet, whether you eat it, drink it, or smash it, the key is, get more of it. And of course, when it comes to building muscle, we have to talk about protein at some point. But not all protein is considered equal. And sure, there's a lot of debate about how much protein you need, but I don't think we get enough lean protein. What I mean by that is, what is the protein in its natural state? We, we need to start there. So if you're talking about a steak, it's just a steak. And if you're talking about chicken, it's just the grilled chicken. And if you're talking about fish, well, you know, it's fish. You get the idea here. And maybe even vegetarians, we're just talking about the lentils not the whole recipe. I think that's where we maybe start to screw things up a little bit. Look, how you start to prepare your meal actually will determine whether or not you're on the right path or not. So like grilled citrus chicken is a good start because I don't think you're gonna go and then throw Alfredo sauce on top of it. Alfredo and citrus, not really a good mix. But of course in the process by making that right decision, you preserve the nutrient value of the protein itself without kind of messing it up. In contrast, I could have chosen chicken parmesan and thought, well, I'm still getting my protein, but you're also getting the fried breadcrumbs, the cheese, and probably a whole hell of a lot of pasta to go with it. I guess all I'm asking you to do is take a simple step back and evaluate not just if you're eating your protein, but how you're eating them, because how you eat them matters. Introducing other things that you don't need into your body at the same time that you're getting your protein is not the end objective here. What is helpful is actually making the right choices. This is where something like a protein powder comes in incredibly helpful and convenient because it strips out all the things that you don't need. Our RX Pro 30G supplement, brand new actually, available over at athletics.com, is a high quality protein, 30 grams per serving with 28 servings per bag. Cheap plug aside, guys, remember the old saying, you are what you eat? It's actually very true. If you wanna be a better version of yourself, you gotta eat better foods. And these are five powerful foods that are very easy to implement into your diet right now and are going to benefit you, I guarantee. If you're looking for a step-by-step -step meal plan, guys, we have them over at athletics.com. If you found the video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up. Make sure you click subscribe and turn your notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.